Hello. I am Chong Chong Ung from Alliance for Korea United. I will be emceeing this event. Celebrating the March 1st movement, we are organizing this event and we'd like to express our sincere thanks for your active participation. Two days ago, we had the March 1st movement event and we could see your great passion on the day. And today, once again, we are going to have a special lecture to commemorate March 1st movement. And I sincerely hope that we once again remember the spirit of March 1st movement today. And we are going to invite Pyeon Jeun from Washington Culture Foundation, their baby drum performance. Let's invite the team. Next, we are going to invite Kim Yusu, president of AKU Washington. She is going to introduce participants and share greetings. This year, we celebrate the annual March 1st commemoration ceremony. So two days ago, in this building, we had a special ceremony. March 1st movement was a non-violent resistance movement. They contributed to world history by influencing the liberation movement of ethnic Asian countries such as China, India, and Vietnam. In North Korea, March 1st movement is considered a failed movement, and the South Korean scholars who are immersed in Kim Il-sung's national history have devalued March 1st movement as nothing more than people's uprising claiming that Korea's liberation came solely as a result of a communist leader Kim Il-sung's armed independence struggle. I read Kimi Declaration of Independence written by our forefathers 105 years ago, which is not only a historic manifesto that inspired the unification movement, but also a clear vision of a future that reflects the noble moral authority of our forefathers and their clear vision for building a new country that pursues freedom, peace, democracy, and equality. Here you can see the Kimi Declaration of Independence. The independence of Korea is a bright command of heaven and the tide of times and the exercise of the legitimate right of all mankind to live together in coexistence. So our task today is only to build ourselves, never to destroy others. It is a solemn command of conscience to forge new destiny for one's country, not to envy, hate, and reject others out of resentment. Let the peace of the East become the stairway to world peace and human happiness. Gone are the days of might and power. In their place are the days of morality and honor. Our actions today are born out of the national need for justice and guidance, for survival and dignity. So let them be free spirit and never driven by exclusionary sentiment. Let our action respect order above all else, and let our arguments and attitude be upright and just. 
I read it again, replacing independence of Korea with the unification of the Korean Peninsula. I'm convinced that it was the best declaration ever written, surpassing even the American Declaration of Independence. The most important diplomatic challenge before the goal of realizing unified Korea is to persuade the powers surrounding Korean Peninsula to agree to unification. Every country makes a foreign policy decision based on its own interests. In the case of a reunification movement, it is necessary to clearly present to neighboring countries, including United States, and the benefits and strategic value of reunifying Korean Peninsula, and at the same time create a diplomatic approach to convince them of the benefit of a reunification. The strategic value of a reunified Korea has already been well documented. A unified Korea can not only solve North Korean nuclear issue that threatens not only Northeast Asia, but also world peace once and for all, but also contribute to the stability of the Northeast Asian region by solving North Korean human rights issue at the same time and gain the market and investment opportunity in North Korea. So it is self-evident that unified Korean Peninsula will be the geopolitically powerful country. On the other hand, there are many people who believe that it has both potential benefit and risk to the national security of the United States and neighboring countries. Therefore, it is very important to present a clear vision of a future of a unified Korea in order to attract cooperation and support of neighboring countries for unification. As an answer to this, I'd like to present the K-DNA, the identity of the Korean people. There is a saying that things that are most Korean are the most global. So that this saying was introduced about 10 years ago. And when I first uh, the, heard that, I thought that, that is so nationalistic. But under the influence of a Korean wave, we are facing the reality that everything has become the most global by adding K, K-pop, K-culture, K-drama, so on. I believe that K-DNA will become the identity of unified Korea in the future and lead the world. K-DNA, first, our nation is a peace-loving people who have never invaded other country even though we have been called on more than 900 times in our half a million year history. And K DNA is great value indeed, and a unified country of great strength will benefit the world and open the way to well being and prosperity without threatening neighboring countries. K DNA too. Our nation is a people with a moral belief of a filial piety and a royalty and a devotion based on extended family culture. When you go to the restaurant, you call the people like um, the uncle and auntie. And Michael, I call Michael Lee uncle and Michael Lee call me niece. So we are one expanded family. A unified Korea will be an exemplary country that upholds law and order in a free market economic system based on basic order of a liberal democracy. KDNA 3, we are the people with a spiritual and religious soil that allows any religion to blossom. So we have a great harmony of the religion. We are the people with a noble divinity that transforms hate into forgiveness and love. The unified Korea will be the country that embodies human rights and religious freedom. Unification is about building new nation by restoring K DNA, and we are confident that we can convince the United States and the world of a strategic value of unified peninsula with K DNA. As we reflect on the achievement of the greatest patriot, revolutionary, and diplomats, let us learn from them what we can do to unify at this time. Today, we are going to hear about four of the great leaders. And I sincerely hope that you have a great lesson from today's lecture.
Is mine shortly after 38th parallel was drawn toward his compatriot stuck in North Korea. Do not despair. We'll never forget you. We will not abandon you. The fundamental goal of Korean people to find and rescue our lost brothers and sisters in North Korean Peninsula remains the same in the future as it was in the past. Finally, this is the last will of a founding president, Lee Seung Man. Our country, our people should know how hard and difficult it was to regain the country we lost, and we should learn from our unfortunate past history so that we'll never again wear the yoke of slavery. I hope you have a pleasant time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that was a great insight indeed. And next, we are going to invite Professor Chang Kehan from UC Riverside. He is going to share his insight about An Chang Ho and the first Korean town in the United States, Pachapa Camp. So we have a video clip. So let's watch the video clip first. Hello. My name is Chang Tae Han. I'm professor at UC Riverside and director of Yongho Kim Center for Korean American Studies. Today, I'd like to give you a brief introduction to uh, Tusan An Chang Ho. I'd like to give you a brief description of Pachaka Camp that he founded here in Riverside from 1905 to 1918. That will be the main topic. So I'm going to share more detailed information about Pachaka Camp. Pachaka Camp is the name of neighborhood, and we need to know the history of Korean Americans in the United States to have an identity as a Korean Americans. So my theory is that not knowing history is like a ship without anchor drifting aimlessly. Tusan An Chang Ho had his first U.S. residency from 1902 to 1907, and then he went back to Korea in 1907 to work for the New People's Association, and then he went back to Korea in 1911 when Korea became the colony of Japan. Then he went to New York again for his second U.S. residency. Then he went to Shanghai again in 1919 to work for the provisional government of the Republic of Korea in Shanghai. And finally, he had his third U.S. residency from 1924 to 1926. While much is known about Tosan An Chang-ho's life and activities from 1911 to 1926, very little is known about his life and activities in the early America from 1902 to 1907 or 1902 to 1911. But I have now discovered a lot of things through this research. First of all, the state of California has established Tosan An Chang Ho Day on August 13, 2018. The city of Riverside also designated the Pachaka Camp site as a point of cultural interest in two. 2017. Based on the research paper that I published, there was exhibitions at the UCR Carver Center from October 16, 2021 to February 28, 2022. Exhibition received interest from New York Times, LA Times, and Vision News, PBS, NewsHour, NPR, and was widely covered by Korean news outlets. This exhibition tour will be coming to San Francisco, Virginia, New Jersey, and Chicago, and especially in Virginia, where you live. The Pachaka Camp Exhibition Tour will be held from October 5th to November 14th. So I hope that you can attend and see it, especially bring your second generation and share historical and cultural interests of Korean-American history and Tusan and Chang-ho with them. 
that will be great opportunity to share history with the second generation. This is a portrait of Dosan and Changho taken on March 7, 1940, while he was in the forest. As reported by the Shinhan Minbo, until now, Dosan and Changho has been mostly known as an activist of education reform, patriotic enlightenment movement, a movement of skill training an Enlightenment activist and independence activist. But I think Dosan An Chang Ho is an advocate for Democratic Republic. He did a much broader independence movement, especially introduction of a democratic system. So he was the first to sow the seed of a democratic republic so he can also be seen as a revolutionary because he already experimented with a democratic republic in 1905 at Riverside Pachaka Camp. In 1905, Korea had a monarchy in Joseon dynasty. But here in the United States, across the Pacific Ocean, he already experimented with a democratic republic. I think he should be recognized as a revolutionary. In his doctor, doctor thesis, Che Sung Won concluded that the success at Pachaka Camp was a repetition and a reproduction of independence movement of Dosan. So time is limited. I cannot give detailed explanation. Here you can see picture of Ms. Lee and her eldest son, Anne Philip. This is a map that gave me the impetus for my research on Pachaka camp. This is a 908 map from insurance company in New York City. This is the map of a Pachaka camp and it says Korean settlement in small print. This map was discovered at the USA Riverside Library in the early 2000 and I have never seen in any literature that says there was a Korean village or Korean settlement in Riverside in 1908. So I studied this research back in 2016. Surprisingly, there were many documents available. It revealed that Pachaka camp was not just a labor camp, but a historically significant place where seed of democracy was sown, introducing democratic republic and maintaining legal basis as the Korean Americans, not just not Japanese colonial nationals. Particularly, Dosan An Chang Ho, who returned from Korea to Riverside, conceived the idea of nurturing democratic citizens with a greater strength. That is precisely what Pachaka Camp represent. This is a picture of him picking oranges with other workers in Riverside. In the San Francisco Colonial, December 7th, 1902, there was a full-length interview with Dosan An Chang Ho. Here is what I found is why he came to America and what he did there. This is the first Asian American to receive honorary star on Hollywood work of fame. I explained that Pachaka Camp is the first Korean American settlement in the United States because it was a group of Koreans in one area that formed collective neighborhood and they created their own rules and regulations to maintain order and form ethnic community. It is where the seed of Korean democracy were planted. That's why the early Korean immigrants called Pachaka Camp the Dosan Republic. He founded employment agency to provide employment opportunity for immigrant Koreans, which led to the formation of a Korean village. 
while other areas were dominated by men, Pachaca Camp was a family-based community with women and children living together. And the camp held active Korean community activities, such as wedding, birthday parties, and lectures. And his oldest son, Philip, was born in 1905 in Los Angeles Hospital, but family lived in Riverside. Under the leadership of Tosan and Chang Ho, he solidified his position in the independence movement, founding Korean Public Association in 1905, and initiated Shin Min Hye in Riverside in 1906 before returning to Korea in 1917. In 1909, he played a role in organizing Korea National Association, and in 1913, he was involved in establishing Young Korean Academy, fulfilling the role of a national community organizer. The Korean village called Republic of Tosan is a model of democratic and actionable leadership. It was the Koreans living in Pachaka camp that directly motivated that Koreans living in the United States to recognize their legal status. I have found a newspaper article from October 5, 1910, the Shinhan Mimbo, and this is what it says. Riverside District is the first Korean town in the United States, not only being the first Korean town founded by Koreans, but also the first place where Korean Association was founded. This is a picture from Shinhan Minbo, which is a picture of students and teachers in Korean school. This is the Korean Presbyterian Mission, and I found the Korean the Presbyterian Mission Directory. Korean National Association, which was founded in 1909, had local chapters all over the world, and there were 116 local chapters in North America, Hawaii, uh, Siberia, Manjuria, Soviet Union, Mexico, Nanjing, and Petersburg, and it was the only worldwide organization of overseas Koreans. This photo was taken just after Third North America, General Assembly of the Korean National Association at Pachaka Camp in 1911. It shows Tosan An Ho as our photographer taking pictures of delegates. So what I'm looking at now is the third North Korean General Assembly of the Korean National Association, which took place from November 23rd to December 4th, 1911. At that time, National Association declared that being a body organized under the system of a complete constitutional republic, the vital right of local assemblies were fully vested in the National Association. National Association has the power to make rules of self-government for the local assemblies, to make a temporary proposals, and to select the members of a general assembly, and to set the annual budget. And they meet once a year. It explained the North American General Assembly of the Korean National Association was established and maintained on the basis of a democratic republic. The third North American General Assembly in North America passed the 21 agenda items during December. All of the assembly members were there to see Tosan An Chang Ho, who returned from Korea. This is the picture of the delegates. I found a new historical fact that Tosan An Chang Ho introduced and practiced democratic system. In 1919, Shanghai Provisional Government declared a diplomat diplomatic republic. And until now, Korean historians have not been able to find out how and by whom and why it was introduced. However, it is an official theory in Korean history that Great Unity Declaration of 1917 provided initial introduction of a democratic republic. That is well known and widely accepted. The theory.
And I recently published a paper saying that the Shanghai Provisional Government in 1919 introduced Democratic Republic because Democratic Republic was introduced immediately in Pachaka camp in 1911 and experimented and had a success. And Pachaka camp closed in 1918. And on November 10th, Pachaka camp era came to an end as the local hall moved from 1532 Pachaka Avenue to 1158 Vine Street. Another important thing is that women's movement was very active in Pachaka camp. I think this should be recorded in history of Korean women in Korea. On January 21st, 1918, Korean National Association issued a decree by Reverend E. Dae-hui, the President of the General Assembly, allowing women to enter Korean National Association on an equal basis with men. So the first time women were able to achieve equal status with men was the Korean National Association and I think it is a very important historical fact that Korean American women were active in independence movement and fought for independence along with men. The success of the Pachaka camp led to the spread of the national movement through the spread of organizational power and spread of Tosan Republic through the idea of village construction movement. Tosan and Chang'o is often know as an enlightener and patriot and so on, but his ultimate goal was to practice theory of a war for independence. The establishment of Hung Sa Dan, the training of individuals and establishment of a Korean National Association, all of these things were done in order to have a war of independence. Ultimately, one of the greatest achievements of Tosan and Chang Ho was the integration. He made a great effort in order to integrate many different elements. It was Tosan and Chang Ho who tried to unite the right wing and the left wing without any ideological bias so that everyone could work together to organize independence movement. In the sense, I believe his greatest achievement is integration. So let's look at the history of a democratic republic declared by provisional government. It was an absolute monarchy until 1910, and it is an accepted historical fact that there was a very little discussion of a democratic republic, and when the democratic republic was introduced in 1919, there was a very little discussion and opposition. Democracy was the norm. Then how did a democratic republic became the norm in just nine years? The third North American Assembly held at Riverside Pachaka Camp completed separation of powers. The first Central Assembly was established, declaring that it was not just a Central Assembly of the Korean National Association, but an in intangible government representing overseas Koreans. Then the Korean National Association was run by parliamentary system and made a self-governing regulation introducing and completing the separation of powers. So I'm arguing the Shanghai Provisional Government in 1919 was the continuation of the Korean National Association. And Great Unity Declaration of 1917 is a very similar to Declaration of a Riverside Central Assembly in 1911. They are similar in that they say that everything is done by the separation of power. So I argue that the root of a democratic republic are Riverside Pachaka camp, the very place where North American National Assembly of the Korean National Association was held. So there are so many big important achievements of Tosan and Chang Ho. The most important one is honesty. He said, even picking an orange, be honest, don't lie. And 
Tosan An Chang-ho is a great organizer. Whenever he went, he created the Korean organization so that uh, they could have an independence movement. The most important thing is the integration movement once again, so ultimately the unification movement. So I think that this honesty organization integration movement is a kind of mentality that represented Tosan An Chang Ho as he is. So here in Riverside, we are trying to establish Tosan Memorial. So this Tosan Memorial will be the place where next generation will be educated. It will be the place where they will be able to establish their Korean American identity. It will be an important place to network globally with the Korean diaspora. The purpose of Tosan Memorial is to bring historical significance of a Pachaka camp into the present, not to stay in history, but to bring it into future so that our next generation will have the sense of identity as Korean Americans and the sense of a community and active participation in community activities. So today, I have briefly explained the Pachaka camp, which was founded by Tosan An Chang Ho, and I would appreciate it if you could promote and participate in Tosan An Chang Ho Pachaka camp exhibition in Virginia starting October 5th. So please do come and enjoy the exhibition. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. So from LA, he sent this video clip. Thank you for great presentation. So based on his presentation, we had a better understanding about Tosan An Chang Ho and his activities in America. So I thought I have uh, some level of understanding of, uh, about the independence movement in the United States led by Koreans. But by listening this presentation, once again, I had a great lesson and our activities and the past activities should lead to the unification. And then next, we are going to invite James Plin, International President of Global Peace Foundation. He's going to share his in insight about Park Yong-man and the vision of a free and unified Korea. Please welcome him with a big hands. I'm very happy to be here uh, to share with you today on, on this important occasion, uh, commemorating the 105th uh, anniversary of the Sunil Movement. Uh, I must say that when I was uh, invited to speak here, I thought, really? <laughs> uh, I am not an expert on Korean American history. I think you might uh, get the sense that I am not a Korean American. <laughs> Actually, I can probably be most accurately described as an Irish American. Uh, but I have come to uh, do a, a lot of work with on the Korean cause. And along the way, I actually uh, learned a good bit. And so I actually uh, want to uh, share with you uh, just some reflections. Uh, my What I found to be uh, important and inspiring uh, for especially for myself as a non-Korean American. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, that might just be uh, helpful uh, to you uh, to, to think about how these, these are impacting a larger society here uh, in the United States. Uh, actually in 2018, I visited Southern California uh, to meet with some Korean American leaders uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, we had a wonderful lunch meeting, after which uh, I was invited to visit uh, the Korean National Association Museum. Uh, and that was very eye-opening for me. Uh, and so uh, in that uh, examination in the museum, I did, did learn a bit about uh, the various uh, key leaders of independence movement. Uh, I've been asked to make some comments today about uh, young Park, Park Young-man, uh, and I have come to know that he's probably the least well-known of any of these gentlemen, right? I was in uh, Atlanta one time in, in uh, the past at the Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, 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 National Monument, 
And there's a civil rights walk of fame there. I was very surprised to see a Korean uh, in the uh, walk, civil rights walk of fame. That was An Chung Ho, right? Uh, obviously very, very well-known leader uh, uh, globally and in the United States. Of course, Sigmund Rhee, the first president of the Republic of Korea, and Philip J. Sun, uh, with a, a remarkable story and, and work at the time of, of uh, the early work of the independence movement in the United States. But who is this man, Park, Park Young Man? Uh, and so the way that I first got to know about him was back in that Korean National uh, Association Museum. Uh, here is when we first uh, entered. And uh, I was fortunate to have a, uh, the chairman of the museum uh, taking time to uh, discuss with, with myself and a few others. So we spent a lot of time uh, in the museum. I don't know if you've been there, but I found myself taking a photo of every display because I realized, wow, this is an amazing story. I didn't know this story, the history of Koreans coming to America in 1903 and finding themselves in a precarious situation in 1905 when the Jap Japanese uh, uh, occupied uh, their homeland and deciding whether to go back to an occupied Korea or come to the American mainland in San Francisco and Los Angeles to, to build the Korean uh, community here. Uh, and so as I was going through the museum, I came to uh, one display, which was quite surprising and shocking to me, which said the, uh, which said on the signboard, the opening of the Young Korean Military School in Hastings, Nebraska in June 1909 was the first move in the Americas to nurture so soldiers to fight for independence. When I saw those photos from Hastings, Nebraska and Kearney, Nebraska, I was shocked, right? I have been to Hastings, Nebraska and Kearney, Nebraska. I lived for 20 years in Colorado I traveled much in the States around, and I have been to these small towns in central Nebraska. And when I started to think about how is it possible that in 1909, in these small towns in central Nebraska, that young Koreans were living in the homes of American families and training, uh, doing military training, uh, it, under the under the guidance of Young Man Park, that's pretty amazing. And just to let you know, in case you haven't been to Hastings, Nebraska, right? Uh, this is a map of Nebraska. I've circled in red the two small towns in the center of the state. Nowadays, if you're driving on the interstate highway, there's an exit for Kearney, and there's an exit for Hastings. They are very small towns today, right? And just so you get an idea of where it is, if you uh, started drove from Los Angeles to Hastings, Nebraska, it's 1,400 miles from Los Angeles. If you started here in Washington, D.C. to drive there, it's 1,300 miles. So this place is kind of right in between the coasts. And somehow in that area, a very significant group of young, young Korean men were training themselves uh, to be independence fighters. And so that's pretty amazing. Uh, and so just a little bit of, that I've learned about the story of uh, Young Man Park. So he, uh, of course, was a, a Korean nationalist and, and uh, uh, independence uh, activist. And in 1903, uh, he was uh, imprisoned with Sigmund Rhee and began his, his uh, connection and work with Sigmund Rhee. Uh, in 1905, he immigrated to the United States and because of previous connections, went first went to Denver and also to central Nebraska. Right? And he enrolled at the uh, University of Link, uh, Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska in 1907. That photo is a photo of him uh, at the University of Nebraska. Uh, then in August of 1909, he established a military training program uh, for young Korean men in Kearney. Now, these two towns are close to each other, right? There was already a, a school 
that was doing uh, like a cadet school for young Americans there. Uh, and so they had a special, special program for, for uh, young Koreans. Uh, then in 1910, uh, uh, he, uh, they moved the training program to the college at Hastings, just some miles away, uh, and began the official uh, uh, training program there that was in operational until 1915. So uh, this was very, very impressive to me. Uh, and this, this was a, a unique contribution that Park Young Man was making. Uh, as I'm sure you know much, much better than me, the various independence leaders had uh, different ideas on, on what was important to focus on. I, I know, for example, that An Sheng Ho was really focused on, on uh, raising up young people to be young, young men and women with character to actually build the future of the nation. And Sigmund Rhee uh, uh, really believed that, that it was important for international support to be garnered for uh, the Korean cause and focused on di diplomatic efforts. And, and uh, Philip Jason uh, understood the importance of civic work and uh, gathering uh, citizens to understand how to create a, a system of governance and that, that is appropriate for a free people as they're experiencing here in the United States. But Young Man Park uh, was, was convinced that uh, uh, young men should be trained uh, to, to be military uh, fighters in, in the war for independence. And so in 1912, he actually went from, from Nebraska to Hawaii, where he established the Korean National Army Corps. <clears throat> so uh, for me, th this story is, is significant again, because how, how did they end up in Nebraska? And how, how did that work in Nebraska? And so one there's one of the common threads that we always will find uh, in the connections of the independence movement in the United States is connections to church communities, right? Uh, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but uh, when you read some of the history of what was happening in Nebraska, right? Uh, then, for example, there's a, an American woman who wrote this history for Nebraska and she was mentioning, oh, this family uh, was hosting this student, and that family was hosting uh, other students. And those connections were made through the Christian churches, right? Uh, and that was the foundation and basis upon which there was trust, uh, there was a commitment uh, to understand and to support the Korean cause based on that shared faith perspective. And so... Uh, uh, in that short period, there were some important uh, leaders who graduated from the, uh, the military training. Uh, one of them uh, uh, became very prominent later. You maybe know his name, Dr. Hen Henry Chung. So uh, he was one of the, the early uh, important students there. And uh, uh, the, according to, to the Uh, to the history of that time, uh, the caliber of the students uh, was an important indicator of the success uh, that they had in their training. Uh, Dr. Henry Chung uh, uh, traveled the United States and Hawaii on behalf of the independence movement. Uh, later, he became uh, a, a key person working with uh, Sigmund Rhee as, and when he became first president of ROK, and he served as the uh, nation's first Ambassador uh, ROK's first ambassador to Japan. And so the point I wanted to share here was, is this an assessment of that impact in, in uh, central Nebraska, uh, talking about Young Mong Park, the guiding spirit of the Korean students in this country. Young Mong Park was instrumental in forming the Korean Residents Association of Nebraska, which expanded to all of North America. He continued to speak and work on the issue of independence for his country. And so the lasting impact uh, that he had uh, is in, can be seen in this particular case of the uh, military school. So uh, I wanna mention what, what uh, I, I also think, and for, from my point of view and a larger perspective, right? Uh, what's, what's the 
uh, motivation and connection, what's the underpinning of the relationship between the Korean people and the American people? It's a deep connection. It's a connection that has been deeply planted for more than uh, for more than a century, right? And so that's important for us to remember and understand for today. So uh, from the 1880s, I'm sure you know the history much better than me, uh, American Protestant missionaries came to Korea uh, and uh, what they were able to do is not only just uh, uh, share their teachings, but to more focus on how to, how to provide service with uh, medical services and other kinds of ways of helping to advance and reform society. Uh, in that connection, uh, in that work uh, with the Korean people, uh, beginning from the late 19th century and into the early 20th century, uh, those American missionaries uh, built, uh, built deep bonds and they brought back uh, to America a deep love of the Korean people and a commitment to support the Korean people uh, in their cause for fundamental rights and freedoms. So that's a two-way relationship, a deep bond. And so that, in fact, is what made possible the uh, the families in Hastings, Nebraska, and Kearney, Nebraska, to even know about the situation in Korea, and then to welcome Korean young men to live and work in their homes and to actually be in their community. Imagine uh, if you were in the in the center of the United States in the early 1900s, and some young Asian men were doing military training. You might get pretty scared. Right? You might wonder what on earth is going on in our backyard. And yet they understood uh, that there was a shared bond of understanding and faith and values between them and the Korean people. They welcomed that. They supported uh, the Korean cause. And so uh, Koreans, it's an amazing story to me, the, uh, the independence movement in the United States. The Korean, that history is an amazing story to me. Right? The more I have learned about it, the more I have been impressed. Right? Uh, what even we heard in the previous presentation from Dr. Chung about, about the uh, An Shung Ho in California and so forth, uh, that work was beginning long before the Samo movement in 1919, right? So we know that. And uh, that support was reflected in organizations like the Korean National Association. I was in their museum and was impressed, but we heard earlier also about how important that association was throughout the history. And then when I learned that, that uh, Koreans in America were the main financial support for the independence movement all through those early years. I was amazed, really, right? Because immigrant, my, my parents, my grandparents are immigrants to the United States, right? Uh, from Ireland. Uh, coming, my grandfather came here in 1908. Uh, not easy when you're an immigrant, especially most immigrants come because they're looking for new opportunities, which means they don't have, you know, a lot of resources. And, and so I believe that the Korean immigrants, you know, had a hard life. And yet they were able to commit and sacrifice to, to actually support the Korean independence movement, the main financial support came from the United States. That's uh, amazing and important. And what uh, also has, has uh, uh, been very impressive is how the former missionaries and their American churches actually became the important advocates in support of the Korean people, not just for a short period of time, over decades, understanding and appreciating the importance of the Korean cause and inspiring their members to likewise support that cause. That's remarkable. And what is most fundamentally underneath that uh, is the shared, shared values. Right? 
the Judeo-Christian ideals of freedom and equality that were shared in the teachings of Jesus in the Christian churches are the same ideals that are the underpinning of the American founding. That's why Philip Jason very specifically convened the first Korean Congress less than two months after March 1st, 1919 to link the, uh, the, the uh, Korean cause to the founding of America based on those ideals. That's a powerful motivating uh, force uh, for people to strive for a high purpose. And so uh, there's a, a lot, a lot uh, that we have uh, learned to talk about in the work that I do uh, about this relationship between the Korean uh, and American people. Uh, uh, we are here marking the, the Samil movement on March 1st, 1919, uh, 105th anniversary. Uh, and so even that history of what happened in those, those years uh, is incredibly uh, significant. Right? And so uh, it's quite remarkable. I'm sure we'll hear, hear uh, subsequently more about, about the first Korean Congress, but that, that was, is remarkable, uh, that linkage uh, in April of 1919, right, uh, right here in Philadelphia, what, what Korean leaders did under uh, Dr. Philip Chason's leadership is uh, remarkable. Right? Um, but that, that uh, founding uh, is reflected in different kind of ways. So as I've studied about these things, right, I became very curious about the history in 1919. I just want to share a couple more points with you. Uh, uh, I, I wondered what was what was in the media in 1919. So I actually did a little project myself and searched through newspaper archives. And so here's an article from March 15th of 1919 in Salt Lake City, Utah. Now I put this one on here because I've been to Salt Lake City many times. <laughs> it's an important city now in the West. Uh, in 1919, I don't think it was a very big city. Right. And that they had a major story about the uh, movement for Korean uh, freedom and, and, and the importance of what the independence leaders were doing it was a major story in Salt Lake City in just just uh, a week or two after two weeks after the March 1st movement was launched. I started looking around the country and I'll just do, do this uh, for illustration. But uh, here are some of the articles that I found in 1919. Of course, they were in Los Angeles and Baltimore and Washington, D.C. and so forth, but there were articles in Burlington, Vermont. There were articles in Waterloo, Iowa. There were articles in the small town of Butte, Montana about the Korean independence movement in 1919. That is amazing. I was so curious about that that I searched all the articles in 1920 and 1921 and 1922. And you know what I found? I found that there were lots of articles, even two or three or four years later, right? And I am sure that there were those articles because there were activists who were promoting the cause. There were Korean independent supporters who were traveling the country who are speaking in churches, who are speaking in communities about this cause and bringing awareness to the American people about the cause for freedom of the Korean people. That's a remarkable story. It actually planted seeds that have really been the basis for the deep, deep connection between the American people and the Korean people. The Korean cause is one of the most important in our, in our nation's history here in the United States. Uh, so this unfulfilled, this dream is unfulfilled, right? The aspiration of the uh, independence movement is unfulfilled. Even at the end of World War II, the, the aspiration for a unified nation uh, was unfulfilled. Uh, there's unfinished business, an unfulfilled dream. Uh, the divided families are still are uh, unresolved. Uh, the tragic circumstances of human rights in North Korea still must be addressed. 
Uh, we believe in the work I do with the Global Peace Foundation and with Alliance, supporting Alliance for Korea United, uh, is that it's an urgent uh, priority now to promote and advocate for a free and unified Korea. Uh, uh, we heard from uh, Mrs. Yusuf Kim earlier some points about KDNA and some of the issues. You all know them well, uh, but uh, there needs to be a new approach. Uh, and uh, in the work we do, we believe that should be a compre comprehensive approach that addresses not only denuclearization, but also human rights, good governance, and economic development, all of the issues uh, that can then lead to a free and unified homeland for the Korean people of high ideals. And uh, for us, the, the, uh, uh, the important thing is that point about ideals, right? If the Korean people want a unified homeland, what kind of nation would that be? Right? What, what kind of guiding principles would be important to the Korean people? How is it that that, that nation could, could benefit all of the Korean people, but not only all of the Korean people, but all of their neighbors, right? How could that nation draw on, on the KDNA, right? So that it became uh, a model nation in the world. And so along the way, I learned about Hunga Gingan and uh, this ancient ideal of the Korean people. And if the unified Korea is a nation that manifests that ideal, it can, it can work to solve problems uh, in our world and be a model uh, for the world to emulate. So uh, way forward, we gotta focus on the end goal. The end goal is a free and unified Korea. Uh, we believe that the solution is unification based on the vision to build a free and unified Korea that fulfills that long held aspiration. One thing I've also learned about the Korean people, uh, which I is, is a, an admirable trait, uh, is an incredible resilience that uh, once, once Korean people decide on what they want to accomplish, they continue to work and work. That's what I have observed and seen. That's what people recognize in Korean people. Mm -hmm. So in the 21st century, will we forget, will you forget the, the dreams and aspirations and hopes of the independence leaders and your ancestors? I think you don't forget, right? That's why you're here. Uh, but that dream has to be achieved, has to be realized. And uh, I, I am a, a, a passionate supporter of that cause because I, I believe that such a nation will be a great benefit uh, to peace and security and well-being for our world. Uh, that Fulfilling that dream we call the Korean dream. Uh, and in the Global Peace Foundation, we uh, approach this very systematically. Uh, we call it the Korean dream framework. Uh, it's based, our work is, is guided by uh, uh, a book called Korean Dream Vision, Vision for a Unified Korea. It's authored by the founder and chairman of the Global Peace Foundation, Dr. Hyunjin Preston Moon. And so in that, uh, we focus on, on a, a simple basic approach. First of all, the importance of vision focused on the end goal of a free and unified Korea. Uh, we recognize that it's important to learn from history about the shared roots of Korean identity and the aspirations of the Korean independence leaders as we're talking about here today. Uh, we also know that the process must be Korean-led. Uh, Self-determination is what the independence leaders were, were striving for in 1919 uh, with the demonstrations, with their efforts uh, to in, in, uh, interject into the Paris peace talks and get international support from the United States and other nations for their cause to be, to, to be free of Japanese colonial rule. Right. The process must be Korean-led. Uh, uh, as back in 1919, 19, even more so today, international support is necessary to achieve that. Uh, and with that kind of process, then the free and unified Korea can become a nation of high ideals that benefits not only the region, but the entire world. 
And so in conclusion, uh, the dream for a free and unified nation must be built on principles and high ideals, uh, a compelling vision, shared values, and a common goal are needed. The two million Korean Americans are a powerful moral and social voice. I, I passionately believe that the most important component of this is the uh, understanding and attitude of Korean people must be Korean led and that that Korean Americans have an unbelievably important role to play uh, to be, because the most important support for that cause outside of Korea is the United States of America. And you as Korean Americans, I believe, have an incredibly important role to play. We want to work with you. We want to support this effort because it is important not only for Korea, it's important for Northeast Asia, it's important for the whole world. The Korean independence movement should be studied by young people, especially Korean American young people. Wow, learn about your history. Wow, to be proud of what, what your grandparents and great grandparents did, it's amazing history. But the lessons are also so important how they actually worked with citizens, how they networked to build support in, in civil society, how they were able to, to bring that cause onto the, onto the, into the awareness of the American public. There's a lot to learn from the uh, independence movement in the United States. And with that, uh, with the strong support of Korean Americans, we believe that the Korean dream can be realized. Thank you for your Now I'd like to invite Dr. Michael Lee, former CIA member. He will talk about Sungman Lee and building a new ROK nation. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Those who are in uniform, I am very happy to see you, Korean veterans. I am normal or not? Uh, am I looking normal? What is no normal? What about my buttons? It's well closed. If you are not well closing the buttons on your clothes, it's just one minute to take the uh, correct buttons. Actually, uh, in Korea, is in now turmoil because its buttons are not well closed. Do you understand me? The birth of Korea. We have a long history, and we, the birth of Korea is very significant in our long history. And the birth of Korea was able to be possible thanks to the efforts of Sungman Lee. And but his achievements are buried in dust. And in 1945, Korea was founded, but there was no one who was celebrating the foundation day of Korea, the 1945, the year of 1945. So we should really understand the situation. Do you understand me? So we should be awakened. These days, uh, surprising things are happening in Korea. Do you know the movie called The Birth of Korea? That was released and Korean people are now being awakened after watching that movie.
So Michael Lee, me. Actually, I am on the movie three times. So I am actually doing narration as a witness. So the Capitol Hill in uh, the U.S. that the movie will be played. So please watch the movie, and I hope that you don't understand you understand properly the role of Sung Man Lee in Korean history. We don't really well know about this Sung Man Lee because the left wing party is actually burying that story in the dust. When Jong Yi Park, the president Jong Yi Park was doing Sema Rundong, uh, the spirit was actually came from uh, the movie Sang Mok Su, Korean movie Sang Mok Su, uh, Green Tree, and the director Kim Kim Dong Young, he made a movie, The Birth of Korea. Actually, I wrote a paper and he got an idea from my paper. That's how he made the movie, The Birth of Korea. I gave the paper to the chairman of AKU. And if you need, you can read my paper. It's very in detail story like a 10 times more detailed story is in my paper. Sung Man Lee was born in Hwanghaejo, Pyeongsan. He was a Confucian, his family was Confucianism, and he learned actually from Baeje Hakdam, Baeje School. And he was taught by missionaries from the United States. And he learned a lot about democracy. And he was awakened at school of Baeje. And Korea was actually ruled by King. And Korea was actually uh, based on the monarchy. And he operated Park Sing coup. And he was actually sentenced to death and he was imprisoned. And at the time, missionaries and many people pledged that his sentence should be reduced. And he became a Christian. And uh, God's history started from that time. And he read 600 books while he was in jail. So, Sung Man Lee actually taught a lot in prison. His uh, comments, Min Yong Man, actually he committed suicide while he was doing independent activities and also Mr. Han Gyu Seol. Uh, state secretary and missionaries, they actually uh, pleaded so that, uh, plat uh, okay, made a petition so that his uh, prison ten sentence can be reduced. So Korea was well in, was struggling with neighboring countries at that time. And Sung Man Lee thought we need to get help from the United States. And Sung Man Lee was uh, very uh, good at speaking English. So at the time, he was sent to the US. And he studied in the US. Actually, he graduated from uh, Georgia U Washington University. He got bachelor's degree. And also he got degree from Harvard and also Princeton University, which are very 
uh, prestigious universities. Usually it takes nine to 12 years to finish the study, but Dr. Lee finished the courses within five years. And as a first Korean American, he got doctorate degree. And at the time, universities said uh, the, the genius, most genius person in their universities is Sigma Lee. And he is actually the founding father of Korea. That is blessing of God. So the founding father, Sung Man Lee, uh, this story, his story should be well known to Korean people. The Koreans are now don't understand the story of Sung Man Lee. And actually we are in turmoil after the left wing parties are taking power. So we have to be awakened. So I hope that we should really properly understand the achievements of Sung Man Lee. So uh, in the history of uh, international history, Korea's birth is quite significant. Nineteen nineteen April, uh, provisional government of Korea was established in Shanghai. Dr. Lee at that time, he served as the first president of provis uh, provisional government of Korea after he earned doctorate degree. And at the time, An chang supported him a lot. So he was able to be the first president of provisional government of Korea. When you visit uh, Hyo Chang district of Korea, Yongsan district of Korea, Kim Gu is well revered by Korean people, but Koreans are all deceived. The Soviet Union actually provided uh, financial support to the provisional government of Korea. And some of the money was wired, and but Dr. Lee said, we should reject the money from the Soviet Union. We shouldn't work with the communist parties. But the provisional government accepted the money and two thirds of uh, members of provisional government were so pro-Soviet at that time. At the time, Dr. Lee said, we shouldn't accept the help from the communism. We can, shouldn't work with communists. Nineteen forty and nineteen forty five. Five hundred sixty four activists, independent activists, existed. Uh, with uh, so we needed the help from the United States to earn independence in Korea Peninsula. So that's why he went to the U.S. to get help, and he actually built relations with the leaders in the United States. One of them is George Washington University's Dulles. Uh, the General Dolans. He was the Secretary of State and he was a dorm room member with Dr. Lee. 
and MacArthur. Uh, General MacArthur is one of friends of Sung Man Lee. And he built relations with MacArthur. So with four presidents of the United States, he became friends. And also Woodrow Wilson, Roosevelt, Truman, and Eisenhower. These four uh, presidents had some bonds or relations with Dr. Sung Man Lee. So while he was um, making some efforts for the independence, he built these relations. When Korea was liberated, the U.S. said uh, the Korea's territory is actually annexed to Japan and it's Japanese territory. But in 1943, there was a Cairo Declaration at the time in White House. The secretary at the time of the state was a friend of Sung Man Lee. And at the time, Sung Man Lee persuaded him so that uh, he can make some um, Suggestions to the United States President. So the U.S. made the pledges for independence to the Cairo Declaration. So without his effort, we should have been at, in the territory of Japan. But Korea is now free and independent nation thanks to his efforts. Before our independence, in 1945, February, uh, we had a uh, Yalta Congress. Uh, the Soviet was involved at that Congress. After the bombing of uh, Japan, 1945, 8th of August, uh, for seven days uh, there were war and allies won the war. So uh, at the time, Korea uh, got independence and Japan was actually uh, at the time surrendered to the Allies. Many people at the time didn't understand the international situation. And at the time, the God's history started. There was an operation team under the U.S. military. There was a Charles Bonsteel and Jean Rusk. They thought, uh, we have to have some right cause. So uh, Korea might be a satellite, become a satellite state of Soviet Union, they thought. So White House accepted these uh, two men's idea. So as they made pledge in Yalta conference, uh, they divided the Korean peninsula at 38 parallel. And there was a Moscow conference at that time, how to deal with Korean Peninsula issue. And they made an agreement of the trusteeship. trusteeship. 
at that time. The Soviet Union at the time, they had ambition to communize Korea, uh, make, community as, uh, make Korea as a communist country. So uh, some people objected trusteeship at that time. Yi Chol-gyong at that time made objection. So many people at that time objected trusteeship and also uh, there was a co-commission between the U.S. and Soviet Union. And Soviet Union had strong stance at that time. Soviet Union was quite ambitious to turn Korean Peninsula into a communist satellite country. So after three conferences, the uh, commission between the U.S. and Soviet Union dissolved. And Dr. Lee said, uh, we have to have uh, established democratic country uh, with the help of the UN uh, inside uh, the southern part of Korea. So temporary commission of UN on Korean Peninsula was established at that time. And we had general election on May 10th. That was the birth of Korea. And there was an April uprising at that time in order to prevent the birth of the nation. So we should actually learn history, right, Chessy? April uh, uprising is not a democratic movement. You should be awakened. April uprising is actually not a democratic incident. They are uh, actually rebellions to prevent the birth of Korea. That's how Korea was established at that time. So Korea was successful after the birth of Korea. Nineteen forty-eight, as you know, Korea was established, founded, and the U.S. forces withdrew. Withdrew after that time, but there was some uh, irony. Nineteen fifty. Hutchison he uh, actually divided uh, the nation. Atchison line was established at the time and Kim Il Sung at the time thought that uh, the US is not anymore interested in Korea. So at the time, uh, the U.S. thought that Korea is not a priority, pri pri priority for them. So Il Sung Kim, Kim Il Sung said uh, the U.S. is not no longer uh, interested in Korea. That's how Korea War started. The North Korea invaded the South. Without Dr. Lee, we have been fallen into the hands of communists at that time. The UN allies dispatched uh, the soldiers. The US at the time changed their mind. The US started to protect uh, the southern part of Korea. And Sung Man Lee comments, Dr. Dulles or General Dulles and MacArthur, they 
insisted insisted that uh, also Billy Graham Hester he insisted that we have to protect Korean people, the South Korean. So there are a lot of Christians in the southern part of Korea, and they shouldn't be fallen into the hands of com communists. MacArthur, Dulles, and Bill Graham uh, persuaded the U.S. administration so that they can protect Korea, South Korea. And there was an armistice agreement at that time, but uh, Dr. Sungman Lee objected the armistice agreement. He thought that uh, we need to go to march toward the north. Uh, but at the time, the U.S. said uh, the Sungman Lee is very stubborn, stubborn, and he is problematic. So, the U.S. Uh, tried to try to remove Sungman Lee at that time. Some people are saying that Sungman Lee is dictators, dictator. But Sungman Lee uh, was actually, uh, he's not a front man of the U.S. I, Eisenhower tried to remove Sungman Lee at the time, but uh, Sungman Lee made a very genius idea. He released uh, anti-communist prisoner of war. He called Won Hyung Da, the chief of the prisoner of wars. You have to prepare red peppers. And in the pouch, they, the pouch was filled with the red pepper. And June 18th, nationwide, we will release prisoner of wars. And so uh, Korean people, uh, they are saying hello to the guardians of the prisons at the time. And they actually splatted uh, uh, the red paper, splashed red paper. And so uh, they took away the keys of the prison and they released 27,000 prisoners of war at that time. So the U.S. was very shocked. And Eisenhower was very shocked at that time. So they, they were discussing how to deal with that issue after uh, the release of the prisoner of war. Dr. Lee made declaration at that time. He said, we are against communism. We really hate communism. So we have to save those who are anti-communists. We cannot send uh, the prisoner of war to the north northern part of Korea, which is communist part. Part. So uh, we have to save these anti-communist prisoner, prisoners of war. So many people actually praised him. This is very significant event in the history of Korea. And at the time, the President Eisenhower after the next day of the declaration and scholars and leaders of the U.S. actually praised Dr. Sungman Lee. So Eisenhower, he changed his mind. 
So he was discussing this issue with other leaders of the United States. And at the time, people persuaded Eisenhower so that they can uh, make future defense treaty between the US and Korea. So they signed the Mutual Defense Treaty. This is very important occasion in Korean history. The Mutual Defense Treaty, uh, without this, Korea uh, would have been into the fallen, uh, fallen into the hands of communi communists. But Korean people are now revering Kim Go. We have to change our history and we have to rewrite our history and we should be awakened. You have to watch the movie of the birth of Korea. One million people watch that movie. It is now being played in LA. So we have to rewrite our history, modern history of Korea. So Koreans are now uh, going uh, on a wrong path. It's in turmoil. So the achievements of President Park jong hee and President Lee Seung-man Seung -man Lee should be well understood and properly understood again. So we have to repent. Korean people should make repent uh, so that we can actually awake people. We have to repent our wrongdoings, which is a uh, wrong understanding of the history. But many Korean people nowadays are trying to properly understand the achievement of Seung Man Lee. I hope that Korean Americans will also understand properly the role of Seung Man Lee in the birth of Korea. May 1941, before the Second World War, Dr. Seung Man Lee, he published Japan Inside Out. After Manchuria incidents and also after massive massacre in China, uh, the U.S. will act. Uh, uh, U.S. will be attacked by Japan in the end. At the time, the U.S. was not believing the idea of Dr. Seung Man Lee. But you know, uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked by Japan. A lot of people died at that time, and. The prophecy of Dr. Lee was quite right at the time. So the U.S. people really started to, well, recognize, re-recognize uh, Dr. Seung Man Lee. And many people started to learn the paper of Dr. Seung Man Lee. Nineteen ninety one, Soviet Union was dissolved. There was a uh, supreme leader, Kovachov, of the Soviet Union. He said uh, the communism will fail in the end. He said. And the Soviet Union was dissolved at that time. And many countries uh, were dissolved from the Soviet Union. 
and 66 earlier than de Kufthoff, uh, in his paper, he predicted that the communism will fail in the end. And he actually pointed out the contradiction of communism at that time. Sung Man Lee is such a great man and his achievements should, shouldn't be buried. If we don't understand his role properly, it's ridiculous. And read election at the time, it came from the corruption of the Liberal Party. Sung Man Lee is not connected with the rigged fraudulent election. And so at the time, he uh, was impeached um, after he, many people pointed out he's connected with a fraudulent election, but it's not true. Dr. Lee's philosophy of founding nation, uh, there are three principles. I wrote this, these stories in my paper. There are three principles. First, anti-communism. Communism will fail in the end. And weak nation like Korea should collaborate with powerful countries, which is the US, which is trustworthy partner. So anti-communism and pro-American. And the third is Christian spirit. The birth of Korea was uh, based on the spirit of Christianity. May 31st, uh, Constitutional National Assembly was established. At the time, Pastor Lee yun uh, was invited to the ceremony of the National Assembly and he prayed, Pastor Lee prayed at the time. That is actually stated in our document. It's very uh, significant speech. So the birth of Korea is based on Christianity. So uh, Christianity these days, uh, Christian churches are corrupted nowadays in Korea. The pastors of church, 60% of them are pro-North. We cannot be friends with the North, North Korea. They are praising Kim and Song. They should repent. I have one more thing to make uh, comments. The left parties, uh, the, the circle of the le left are actually are dominant in the media and the politics and every corner of the society in Korea. And left wings are now uh, prevailing in, in Korea. So defense treaty, mutual defense treaty, and also US military stations in Korea. These are two obstacles for 
the left wings of Korea. The uh, declaration of the end of the war can be made after uh, canceling the armistice agreement. So please listen to me. The military use military stations in Korea. They are not uh, the soldiers who participated in the Korean War. Currently, those stationed in Korea after the Armistice Agreement based on the Mutual Defense Treaty those in uniform in the U.S. were dispatched to Korea and they are not those who participated in Korean War. So it's based on the U.S. strategy. So we shouldn't withdraw uh, those stationed in Korea. There is no legal base. So the U.S. military stationed in Korea should not be withdrawn. And mutual defense treaty at that time, it was a lifeline for Korea at that time. We had to get help from the U.S. at that time. We embraced the U.S. at that time because we needed uh, their help. That's how the Mutual Defense Treaty was created. And the characteristics of Mutual Defense Treaty uh, have been changed. And these days, actually, the U.S. is embracing Korea because they need us. The U.S. need Korean people. For 5,000 years, Korea was struggling uh, with the power games of powerful countries like Japan, China, Russia. So uh, geopolitically, Korea is very important from the point of the U.S. of unification, we should take back the territory from North Korea. And also we have to put words into practice. So we should be awakened once again after we learn uh, the achievement of Sungman Lee. Thank you. Thank you very much. So that was an insightful lecture by Michael Lee. And now I'd like to invite George Che, President and CEO of Philip Jason Foundation. He would like to talk about Dr. Philip Jason's independence movement activities in America and what does it mean for young generation. It's 5.15. Uh, you hope that you have dinner at 5. Uh, I'm, I should be short. From 9 uh, a.m., I actually took the train to be here. I hope that you can be patient during my speech, although you are hungry.
So uh, this is a AKU um, Action for Korea United. I would like to talk about. Uh, I would like to shift my focus to the next generation. And also, unification is important for us. Please read this, and this well indicates what. Philip Jason thought about. So he said we have to be united. The North and South Korea should be un unified. So after you suffer COVID, uh, you, you know how uh, well-being is important. I studied chemical engineering, and so I'm not far from history, but I am working uh, as the president of Philip Jason Memorial Foundation. I'm 1.5 generation of immigration immigrants. I I can speak Korean and English two languages. And independence movement in America. That's what I studied while I am serving as the president and CEO of Philip Jason Memorial Foundation. And I wanted to give some lessons from Philip Jason to young generation. And also I thought about what our foundation can do based on the philosophy of Philip Jason. If you need some lecture about Philip Jason, I hope that you can invite other people because I'm not an expert about uh, Philip Jason and Korean history. And these are very well renowned speakers, those who know about Philip Jason. Today, I'd like to talk about Philip Jason's life and independent movement in Korea. And also a month later, first Korean Congress was held in Philadelphia, which was organized by Philip Jason. And we have to teach this history to our next generation. And after they learn history, what they can do. So I uh, like to focus on learning, service, and leadership development. That's what our Jason Memorial Foundation can do. So we will we would like to work as change maker. 100 years ago, Korean people got help from the U.S. people, but Korean Americans, we are good people and we are not good and we can provide help to uh, the people in the United States. So I would like to provide service to those living in the U.S. Some people might wonder why uh, Philip Jason is using his English name. You know, Philip Jason, actually, uh, uh, if you uh, flip this word, you can see Seo Jae Kil, his Korean name. Although he used his English name, his English name is based on 
his Korean name. Did it, you know? Uh, you, you, you didn't notice? Uh, Philip Jason is actually in his English name, Korean name is inside in his English name. Anyway, he is many first to his credits. He is was the first student group sent abroad and he was uh, earned doctorate degree as first, first Korean American and he he or not he was not able to work as a medical doctor because at the time it was forbidden for him to touch the uh, American people and also he is the founder of the first Korean language newspaper the independent So every two years, uh, he made significant achievements. And our young people are all surprised by his achievements. He entered Harry Hillman Academy and he earned US citizenship and he earned educational medical doctor degree and he married Muriel Armstrong and he had good business and he had happy family life and he was quite successful as a businessman at that time and he had very good family life until 1919 but there was a march for independence movement in korea in 1919 and reverend hyun Soo. He contacted Philip Jason and Dozan Anchamo also contact Philip Jason. So Philip Jason heard the news about March 1st independence movement and they helped first organize first Korean Congress in Philadelphia. And there were uh, about 1,000 Korean Americans at that time, but there were no planes and no transportation, but uh, 150 people gathered for First Korean Congress. It's amazing. And it was held April 14th to 16th, 1919, three days. And you can see this marker, the first Korean Congress. This was called a little theater at the time. And we had, they had conference three days. And they made march to Independence Hall, 150 people marched. And you can see the photograph. Jason, he uh, put in gender equality. He focused uh, equal gender equality. You can see men and women together and women in front rows. And our second generations are excited about his achievements, especially for gender equality. And as you can see, women are leading the movement. Men are following women at that time. You, we can see the signs of gender equality at that time. And we had first Congress, And also, Bureau of Korean Information was established, and Korea Review was published to educate the people in the U.S. 
In Japanese people, actually, they wrote Japan Review. That's uh, why Jason also started uh, to publish Korea Review. And the, he organized the League of Friends of Korea. And Floyd Tompkins was the president of the League of Friends of Korea. We are lacking the resources, we are lacking the documents, but Hong Ki Wan, he went back to Korea last year. Have you watched the drama Mr. Sunshine? Those who watch the Mr. Sunshine, this person, uh, uh, actually Mr. Sunshine uh, is based on his story, Hong Ki Wan. Philip Jason organized the League of Friends of Korea and Hong Ki Soon was in Europe and he made Paris and London chapters. And this is the grave in Queens. And his actually assets were now uh, repatriated to Korea. We had first uh, Korean Congress Centennial celebration in 2019. So three generations of Korean Americans were gathered together to celebrate. And 100 years ago, uh, the U.S. people also provided help. So descendants of Reverend Floyd Tompkins and Rabbi Henley Borkowitz participated in Centennial Celebration. And at State Senate and State House, a uh, resolution was passed. And it was three day celebration. And at Little, Little Theater, from the Little Theater, and 1,500 people marched to the Independence Hall. This is a Little Theater, it's a small place and 250 people can be seated in the little theater. After the march, in front of the Independence Hall, we took the photograph. After we're taking this photograph, this is being displayed at the Memorial Hall, and our next generations are finding their image on the photograph. And Troy Tompkins Church. At the second day, we had performance, and one thousand people gathered. Uh, the U.S. people gathered at Centennial Concert. Our second generation Korean Americans, when we had dinner at the time instead of the first generation five second generations were given the opportunity to share the experiences and many of them said they thought korean asian american history is for our parents because our schools do not teach us because they don't learn Korean history from their school. So in our uh, forum or Congress or celebration, we provided them the education of Korean history. And also we had conference for three days and the publication of Philip Jason was shared 
and we made people network at the time to share the cause. So that's uh, the efforts of advocacy. So Korean, Asian, American second generations feel connection because uh, they are participating in advocacy activities. And I meet a lot of high school students, Korean American students, and they feel pride in Korean heritage and Korean American identity. So in the future, I would like to give more opportunities for them to learn Korean history. So we had Korean American Day, January 13th this year. We provided history education and we uh, provide a lecture about Philip Jason. And we hope that young generation can march after the lecture and we moved them to little, little theater and we started we started march and after photo taking we had a closing ceremony and june 19th of june 1890 this is the day when Philip Jason earned citizenship, U.S. citizenship. So we asked for the passage of resolution celebrating Korean American Citizenship Day. And media is the place where Philip Jason passed away. So media and Bosong, these two cities will establish sister city relations this year. So what our Memorial Foundation should do for young people and also mainstream society. We have two medical health and social service centers and for Korean Americans and Asian community, we are providing service and also, we do leadership, development, and advocacy movements. And we operate Memorial House. We have four centers, two health centers, and one senior center that was started um, during the pandemic. Many elderly people were depressed. One of Korean women made suicide, committed suicide. So we thought that senior center is re required. So at Memorial House and Monuments, we use these for education and advocacy. And we have 45 office staff, including four internal medicine and one GYM, 10,000 or 12,000 patients visit every year. And from June, Dr. Beck joined us, our memorial center. Uh, their family, uh, Ms. Beth, uh, went to South America and they came to Philadelphia. When they were young, she was young. Her family was treated by uh, doctors from our organization. That's how she made up her mind to become a medical doctor. And she's now working with us. So June, she joined our Memorial Foundation. It's like a generational ch change. So we have nowadays youth dream team, drum team, 
and we have leadership development program. For the leadership development, 6 ABC TV uh, provided Philip Powell Award to our foundation. Miu Han is a Korean anchor. So we reopened uh, Philip Jason Memorial House after renovation. Total renovation was achieved. And if you uh, didn't have any opportunity, please visit this uh, uh, memorial house. Not only Korean Americans, but also Asian American class students visit memorial house. And monument was upgraded upgraded so when people visit here they can learn history of Korea and Korean Americans we are very proud of this when you go to the Independence Hall in Philadelphia So there is a uh, new museum in Liberty section and 22 people are displayed. Uh, the Philip Jason is displayed as uh, only Asian American. And you can see Abraham Lincoln and famous renowned persons. So from the perspective of the U.S. people, uh, Jace, Philip Jason uh, played a very significant role. So based on the, his mission and philosophy of change maker, he educated young generation. And based on his idea, our Memorial Foundation will serve all communities in the U.S. Our second generation will actively participate in these services. This is uh, the service done during the pandemic and we visited elderly people and we provided health checkups at that time. So we educated young people and during the pandemic, one-on-one uh, -on -one education was provided to elderly people, how to use Zoom and how to use cell phone. Uh, elderly people uh, had depression during the pandemic. So we had ESL class at Zoom, via Zoom, and also line dance classes were held via Zoom. We are running senior center. We hope that uh, we are providing wellness work to the elderly people. And also, of, we provide vaccination. And also, we provide education uh, to the Asian community about Asian hates. We had very small Asian community, so uh, we were not able to get vaccine at that time, and we pressurized the officials uh, so we got vaccination at that time.
currently uh, 120 clinics are being served by our foundation. So we are providing vaccines and we are providing services. And also rapid task kits were provided to our foundation from Montgomery County. So not just focusing on Asian communities, we would like to have collaboration with other communities. So we are collaborating with other organizations and communities so that we can build a network among young generation. Not just leadership development, but also taking state credits. As you know, Nepal and other Asian countries have low capabilities because they are poor. So uh, we provide small grants to them and we teach how to utilize the finance. Uh, when they are dealing with small grants, they can be able to uh, deal with better, um, more grants, bigger grants. So also we assess the community needs through our project. So uh, we would like to provide one-stop shop service to the Asian community in terms of wealth, wellness, and 5.2 to 5 million grants were given from Montgomery County. So that we can provide better human and health service. Uh, these days we made agreement. Uh, six months after six months, this uh, building might belong to our organization. So uh, you can meet Asian community in this building, and also major services can be provided from this building. That's our goal. Our young generation, second and third generation leadership should be developed. We talk about Korean diaspora in the United States. So we have to develop the role of Korean diaspora and we have to also teach history, Korean history to them. Not just play, uh, also teaching the history, we have to teach them how to serve the community. Not just for Asian America, but also we have to build a network with uh, Latino Americans. I hope that uh, we can build some foundation for Korean diaspora and next generation of Korean diaspora. So I was quite quick. Uh, thank you very much for attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we heard uh, lectures from four speakers. So please hold Taegukki and let's uh, shout Manse three times. Please stand up.
Please follow me. Three times, manse.